Hello everyone, this is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at Zoroark Lycanroc Ninetales. It's an archetype that I've had a lot of experience with and I think it's coming back round into a good time for Ninetales. I think obviously the Zoroark Lucario build really is trying to focus down on beating basically just two decks, Zapdos and Picaron. And it's not quite versatile enough to deal with the little influx of Blacephalon that we've had recently. Also, your Ultra Malamara sort of sacrificed. This has been much more of a balanced build. The Ninetales offering a great GX attack for um, Ultra Necrozma and also typing for Ultra Necrozma if you can choice ban Snowy Wind. As well as giving you that sniping potential that you need against Blacephalon as well as the sublimation for Blacephalon as well. Uh, to jump B-String and also give you one hit KO potential against them. So, this is more sort of... Better in a broad spectrum. You're trying to not only have, you know, the Muck answer for the Zapdos, the Lycanroc answer for the Pika Rom and for Mirror Matches. The Ninetales comes in and gives us a small little bit of help for the consistency of the deck by helping us grab the likes of Timeable, the likes of Nestle, the likes of Pokecom, uh, also Counter Gain in big situations. Um, at the same time, it offers some pretty good attacks for some sniping. So I think overall, this is, you know, the safest sort of like deck you could play in a blind meta. I think you have. All the options for lots of different archetypes and i like having options with zoroark because if you can draw into those options you can use them to the best of your ability and uh, get yourself lots of good results so i think this may be slightly weak in mirror match situations zoroark lucario and zoroark weavile are probably more aggressive than this but the win condition oftentimes in zoroark comes down to the lycan rock himself and just having nine tails as a backup draw engine is never going to be that bad so giving yourself some extra slight consistency, having that beacon available as well as like Brooklyn Hill searching out both these basics should give us good searchability to get us going in the early turns. And hopefully that's going to be enough to push us through in mirror matches without the help of the likes of Weavile. So that is pretty much the intention of this build, having the answers for pretty much everything in the format as long as we can draw into them. So that is the plan. Let's talk about the list and the counts. First of all, 4-4 Zoroark. We want to trade into our stuff. That's the whole emphasis of the deck. Right us beating, you know, one of our min attacks, we do 20 for each of our Pokemon in play. Um, so 120 for him in the active and the full bench, and that's pretty reasonable. We don't play Devadfield in here, I've already mentioned Brooklet, but we do play Kakui, which can help push over some awkward basic Pokemon. Uh, but in general, we're, we're looking for two shots with this guy outside of doing some, like, choice band Kakui shenanigans on a Lele. Um, so yeah, he's just a constant two-hit KO for GX stuff, and he can knock out the likes of Zapdos very, very easily, so that's something to bear in mind. Definitely a good DCE attack. From there, we're going to have the 2-2 line of Lycanroc GX. We want to have Bloodthirsty Eyes available to us, because it can help pick off some of these easy basics a lot easier. Also, we can just bring up big threats and knock them out all at once, thanks to his dangerous rogue GX attack that does 50 for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, oftentimes getting big one-hit KOs. If you can, um, especially if you can use that type coverage to your um, ability, to the best of your ability, really to really capitalize on this. Claw Slash is also a threat in Zoroark Mirror Matches, as I've already mentioned. Um, you can knock out Zoroark as well. So as long as you Dangerous Rogue on a board where he's protected and isn't going to get response KO'd, he can take four prizes on his own sometimes. So definitely worth noting. And obviously he's a big card for Pika Rom as well. Claw Slash with that Kakui or with the Choice Band that can knock out a Pikarom and obviously Dangerous Rogue is likely to take one shots on them as well. So definitely a powerful card. It's good to be a fighting type and his ability really helps the sort of controlling aspect of this deck by being able to pick and choose what you want to knock out turn by turn is definitely part of the reason why I feel this is quite a disruptive deck because you can really ruin setups if you, especially if you go first with this deck, you can get trading first, you can get like and rocking and bringing up things very early and you just have access to a lot of powerful plays early on in the game. From there, 2-2 line of the Ninetales. Beacon is obviously a nice little thing to give us that small extra consistency boost. If we haven't drawn into many basics or whatever, we can still bait a beacon and get these going. Or if we have just spent all of our Ultra Balls and comms on basics, we can end up beaconing as well. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. We then have the Alolan Ninetales GX. Mysterious Guidance is still a very powerful ability, helping us find two items from our deck and get them straight to the hand. That's one of the reasons why we have this one copy of Timer Ball. It can obviously be an instant way to try and find some Zoroark and Lycanroc pieces to get us drawing into stuff. And what I love it for really is getting this Counter Gain out. Counter Gain's a big card in this deck as we can be defensive against the likes of Picarom and against the likes of Zapdos even. 
um, and mirror matches. So having an instant answer to get this out early is a really big deal for trying to make this Lycanroc much more accessible in the early turns. Definitely something I like to see. Um, it then has two powerful attacks. I've already mentioned Sublimation, great for uh, the Ultra Necrozma, Blacephalon, Boswell as well. These are all sort of creeping back into the game. So having this option available is very strong. Snowy Wind is able to knock out um, Jirachis, which is a big deal. You can set up damage on other things as well. Setting up damage on Lele's can also be very big, even in like Zoran mirror matches or against Pika Roms if you have the time, because they are oftentimes playing Jirachi themselves. Um, you can Snowy Wind set up a Lele for a Rattus beating later down the line alongside Guzma and Choice Bands. So really good damage. It's just a reasonable card overall, especially when you can bounce it with Counts Gain as well, similar to how Lycanroc can use it. The Nine Tails uses Counts Gain very efficiently as well. From there, we have the one Ditto, one Grimer, trying to get this Muck into play. Obviously, very important cards when you are looking at Zapdos as being one of the main contenders in the format and other Jirachi-based builds as well. Uh, so Ditto can evolve into any of these four Stage 1s, very versatile, powerful card. Grimer, I'm going for the Chemical Breath one. I've been playing with Slippery Sludge for a while, the one that can just do Confusion on a DCE. Um, but Chemical Breath, just in random spots where you start him, you can knock out Jirachis and initiate a prize raid. Obviously, you never really like starting Grimer in either situation, but at least this can take a prize. So it can sometimes force the opponent to move out of a Jirachi uh, if they're fearing us just taking a random prize here and there. So something to bear in mind. Um, and then we have the Aloha Muck. This is the other part of the disruption that we have, shutting off um, the likes of Jirachi's big, shutting off Coco Prism Star, Coco GX, um, shutting off Eevee, shutting off... Um, let loose all sorts of abilities that we want to shut off right now. Even things like the Marshadow GX, which is teched into some Malamar players' builds. Shutting this down is going to be a big deal for you, so definitely something to bear in mind. We get this out in a good amount of matchups now. So the 1-1 one, one line plus the Ditto, I think, is pretty reasonable and is going to be seen in a lot of Zoroark decks these days. 2 Lele will round out the list. Wonder tagging, looking for early uh, Lilies. We obviously have good outs with the comms, the Ultra Balls. And the physically, you know, six good turn one supporters with the Lilies and the Cynthias is physically pretty reasonable. And unlike previous Zoro builds where you played three Lele, um, Lele is actually a scary card right now. It's quite easy to reach for Zapdos, uh, especially with the Jolteons. Um, also, it's really awkward for the Picaroms. It's a free 170 snipe if they do get their GX attack off on us for the full effect. Um, and it's also fairly awkward in mirror matches, so... And the fact that we have Muck as well means that we don't need to play three copies anymore. We just have two for those situations where we have to Lele turn one. But hopefully with the Lily and the Cynthias, uh, we can get away with it a good amount of the time. From there, onto the item cards. One Power Pad, pretty standard in Zoroark builds for trying to recycle. Usually the likes of Guzma and Acerola if things are going well. Also the likes of Judge and Kukui can be nice for extra disruption or pushing damage if we really need to. Uh, one copy of Stretcher, trying to get back some of these Pokemon as we do play some fairly thin lines of some of these stage uh, ones. Then we're going to play that one copy of Timeable, just because it is searchable via the uh, Ninetales. I prefer it to just having a fourth Pokecom. Three Pokecom, though, is still very powerful. Getting us early basics, um, getting us early Grimer and Ditto especially is important against Zapdos. Getting early Rockruff down is very important against Picarom. And Zeru is, in general, always important to grab. This also can help us get Lele in the early turns and Zoroark's on turn two and stuff. So always a good card you want to have in mind as you're trading. Sometimes if you're holding onto a Pokemon, you want to trade other stuff first because you could draw into Pokemon communication, stuff like that. This really has changed the way that you try and value cards in your hand with Zoroark sometimes. So definitely something worth noting. Um, for Ultra Ball, obviously a big deal for getting Zoroark's in general or Ninetales or Lele, all that stuff. Two copies of Brooklet. I like this in a Lily build, unlike Elm builds where you could get away with other stadiums. I think basically the priority with, with a Lily build is still find nest balls and uh, other basics early. These two additional Brooklet Hills help us get more basics, and that's really good for us because um, Zoroark wants to commit its nest balls to Zoroas, and if you have Brooklet, it means you can also get these Vulpix and Rockruff down you know, pretty easily and just get us early basics. Just gives us more options in general. So I like having this extra small bit of consistency, especially when we have both of these basics to dig out. It's going to be a really nice card to see in the early turns, whilst also being some stadium, stadium removal for Shrines and for Prism Star Stadium, still pretty important to have in here. On supporters, the one Kukui I do like for doing those uh, gusting plays and taking knockouts with Zoroarks on Leles. It can also just help push in random situations like the Claw Slash on Picaroms. 
can get you to 90 with snowy wind sometimes that can be a big deal so um especially with like zap dose if you've done a 70 30 on one zap dose and then you can do it again you can do all sorts of players with the kukui it's something to bear in mind a lot of moments pushing the righteous beating to 130 range as well is a big deal so that's something to bear in mind one copy of judge for hand disruption um then we have the two ofs of guzma supplemented by the bloodthirsty eyes and the pal pad Two Ace Arola for picking up damage stuff. Obviously, once we've got that muck developed on Zapdos, basically all we're doing is trading and looking for Ace Arola the whole game because that's all we really need. We have two copies of Cynthia for some additional, you know, shuffle draw support in addition to the four Lilies that we're going to try and look for turn one if our hand size, you know, if we can reduce our hand size pretty easily. Um, communication helps do that because we can toss some stage ones back into the deck, grab basics that we can instantly play down. Lots of ball search are all instantly playable. So the Lilies in general... As long as we haven't drawn into too many excess supporters in the early turns, it's going to be getting us um, a lot of value on those opening turns. Really good stuff. From there, a couple of copies of Choice Band. Uh, it's not the most relevant card at the moment, but I do think it's made more relevant with Ninetales. I do know that um, Altavia's list uh, in the recent top eight of the regional played one band and he said it was kind of flexible. But when you play Ninetales, I think it increases the value of Choice Band. It means Snowy Wind can knock out Ultras. It means, you know, Claw Slash can knock out um, those Picaroms. Again, something to bear in mind. And pushing towards those Leles, thanks to Snowy Wind, doing damage on them um, prior is always a nice thing to have in mind. So having two Choice Band is not too bad, I don't think, in the deck. Couple, oh, sorry, one copy of Counter Gain. Huge deal for your Ninetales and your Lycanroc. Honestly, I've thought about playing one Band and two Counter Gain. I think it's that important. Obviously, this guy can pull it out, so something to... You know, easily search and get value from early snowy winds and early dangerous rogues. Obviously helping us pull back in matchups where we've fallen behind. Mirror matches specifically and Picarom as well. So these are things to definitely keep an eye out for in those matchups. From there, 4 DC and 4 unit energy will round things out. Obviously the unit can pay for snowy wind um, and uh, sublimation. Uh, dangerous rogue, claw slash, and also even tricks the GX. We have that option available to us thanks to the units if we want to copy an attack. So do bear that in mind as well. Something, we, something that we do have in our repertoire if we really have to. Very rare situations, but often, you know, sometimes it's something to bear in mind if you have no other outs. Some other Pokemon that we could be playing. The big omission from the list is Weavile. Um, sometimes you could just play even just one copy of Weavile that you try and evolve from Ditto um, in, the, in mirror match situations because you never really need to Ditto into Muck. And this could be an extra, you know, surprise attack against them to get some up trades if Zorak players overcommit with abilities definitely something that you have to manage in this deck you have to be very concerned about weavile coming into play and if they're benching lots of rock Ruffs and weaviles it's hard for you to distinguish which is the bigger threat at which time and how many abilities you can hold off on putting into play etc these are all things that you have to be careful of in the weavile matchup uh, especially when we're not playing it um, some other cards that i've thought about playing um there is going to be field blower something that we can bear in mind in case peak roms are going to be squeezing in those uh, weakness policies obviously weakness policy isn't really stapled because even offs build with the lucario still is usually playing field blower sometimes it's being cut though um and we're hoping that people just aren't playing the um weakness policy in the list at the moment basically right now it could be an extra stadium removal as well though which is searchable with nine tails so it's again something that you could bear in mind as a reasonable card to have in your deck list equally max potion Similar to an Ace Roller, but searchable via the Ninetales, so it's more sort of immediate for us on that turn where we do use Mysterious Guidance. Could be considered as a one-off in the deck list, but I think overall I'm pretty happy. Devoured Field and um, a few other Stadium cards could be considered. This pushes you to hit 130 a little bit easier on like Baby Buzzwalls. Oftentimes those Zapdos are playing Baby Buzz with Rainbow, and they always push themselves down to 120 unless they high roll Beast Energy. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, especially with the Kukui backup anyway. I think overall we're pretty okay. One other card actually is Mallow. Mallow's been in a lot of my Zoroark builds, just not this one because Nine Tails is kind of like the pseudo Mallow in my opinion. Um, the only thing obviously Tails can't grab is um, energy cards, um, but Mallow is something you can bear in mind. The big reason why I've dropped Mallow is because I don't want to put Lele down in a lot of situations and also Muck comes down in a lot of situations as well. So we can't just find the one of Mallow all that easily. Uh, Lotto is another card you could consider. Um, again, just because it's a nine tails option to find energy cards, so do bear that in mind. Uh, you could think about adding in one basic energy or one rainbow as well to the list. Rainbow means you can pick up things and stop them getting trapped with your Acerolas. Um, 
it also means that we can um what's it called it's just additional energy sometimes if you want to play basic energy a basic fighting i would probably recommend over a basic fairy uh this gives you brooklet no it gives you viridian forest uh search ability if you really want to as well and uh, that's something you could bear in mind another card that you could think about playing is guru if you do play if you do play the oranguru you probably want to add in a switch or a tantalizer so that you can have a real game against Mill rather than just playing one copy of this and still get like out favored eventually and stuff. So um, if you want to add in the Oranguru, if you respect the sort of Mill decks, um, you can definitely add that into the build as well. But for now, I'm just going to give you the simple shell of Zora Rock Nine Tails. I have been having a lot of fun with this archetype. I've been testing it a good amount, and I do think it's very strong, um, giving us reasonable options against a lot of decks right now, which I like. Especially because a lot of the Pika Roms have moved away from like turbo let loose style um, and gone more towards having an element of Jirachi, an element of Zapdos, you know, a 1 1 Jolteon, all that stuff. They become much, you know, we're much less scared about those opening turns. Um, Zorok hates getting let loosed, <laughs> it really does. Um, even when you're playing a Lily build, uh, you never really like that. So this deck's slowly like creeping back up the the reliance on the lucario is a lot less now i think that the pika roms have gone less all in turn one um but that's only necessary for them because of like how zapdos builds have changed etc so we have a nice start here we have a zerua we also have ditto but we're looking at communication and we're looking at ultra ball hmm it's good for us to bench ditto because we already have the Ultra Ball, but Ultra Balling away two comms sounds pretty ugly. The thing is, we'd be leleeing just to Lily to look for more basics anyway, so I'm going to put this down proactively. Knowing that we have the Ultra Ball, we could even just get rid of our top deck plus one Pokecom. Looks like we're up against some sort of Greninja build. Maybe it's Glaceon Greninja. That would be a very scary matchup. That's one thing we're not prepared for. <laughs> Glaceon Greninja. How scary does that sound? Very? Yeah, very. Let's go with very, shall we? Let's agree with very. We're going second as well, so he could develop... Well, he starts Froakie. Maybe it's just Quad Frog. Well, that's a DC and a pass. Which sounds pretty bad. Um, in this situation, we really don't want a Brooklyn Hill because we could donk him. So we're going to Lele here. Have a look. There's Lily. I think we're always away Brooklyn and Com. We have all of our Zoroarks. We have our Lycan Rocks. We do have Ninetales. Muck isn't really a priority, looking at Greninja. The one thing it could deny is um, Eevee's evolving straight up into Glaceons, but he can do that next turn anyway. So let's get rid of... Let's see, am I going to need counter gain? <sighs> Com is just such a good card. Maybe it's Com gain and I still play the Brooklet. Like, his turn is so slow, I don't need to donk him. Right. Turn is so slow. I'm going to be greedy. I just feel like if Zorak sets up, we win over this deck anyway. A good amount of times. This gives us more discards for a better Lily. Really good turn one. Pretty good. Obviously, we hold the calm for Zoroark next turn. And hopefully, Zoroark makes more Zoroarks. That's the plan. Hmm. See what they're up to. 
Brook blitz out another Froakie. They can go Frogadier, Gale Shuriken. They're going to slap it onto the Rockruff. Skateboard. And a Judge. Judge on turn two. Interesting. That's a pretty busted draw. They're going to Ultra Ball now. Got rid of two Aqua Patches. Oh, Ninetales Greninja. Huh. They're just going to Beacon. Okay. Let's grab Zoroark. We know they're holding Lele. Obviously the Ninetales is too hopeful for him, but I feel like judging a Lele is fine. So now that we know it's not EV based, I think we can nine tails here. Timer com seems good to get us more evolutions going. We can grab Zoro. I think we can comfortably trade band. I mean, he could evolve, evolve, and knock this out if I don't evolve. I guess we can't the energy and the evolution. Oh, we still have a trade. Whoops. I can't see him playing any other stadium that isn't Brooklet, so we'll just trade this. <clears throat> Not a bad turn too. Nine tails makes things happen, and that's what makes me happy. Let's see how the opponent did off the judge. They get to Brooklet out of Froakie, Nest Ball as well. Ah, they are Glaceon based. Here we go then. Guzma as well. Are they just going to Guzma attach pass? Seems like it. Fortunately for us. We got our trades in early. And we'll smack. Glaceon Greninja is definitely a scary archetype, though, for this deck. Like, if, if they just put this ability down early and we don't have outs to, like, Lily or Cynthia. Things go downhill pretty fast. They're going to whiff the Brooklet. They do have DCE. They're going to send a Frost Bullet our way. Hmm. 
Hmm, drawing Cynthia makes me hmm, want to evolve. Oh, sorry, makes me want to attach and play it. I had some nice trades though. How much do I respect his two card hand being able to? I mean, he could Ice Blade KO this, or he could just get two Frog Ears and KO it. Hmm. Hmm. Holding DC is good. How relevant is Choice Band? Choice Band is probably most relevant here. Let's just get the big hand size. Look for Evolution and Acerola's one in our hand, so worth chasing. We find both those things. So that's always good. Right, it's beating. Glaceon Grin just sounds like one of those decks that's probably very good against... Uh, well, it's pretty good against Zoroark and it's pretty good against Zapdos, but I, it has that brick factor that's just... You can't... Can't negotiate with that, really. Needs to has, have some sort of backup draw. Okay, here comes a Frogadier. I'm going to put it on the active. What can they really do? An attachment of water is not that strong. Yeah, just a beacon. Yikes. Cynthia wasn't all that kind to them. Okay. At this point we can start trading pretty aggressively. Yeah, just getting so much hand advantage. We had the option of either Acerola or a Guzma play that turn. Guzma play could have we could have started snowy winding the Frogadier and start paying 30 damage on the Lele for like future Guzma plays. We were pretty far ahead. Avoided the Glaceon long enough to win. Fortunately, by the time the Glaceon was there, we already had all the energies in play. All right, a Lightning deck. Is this going to be Zapdos, in which case, Muck, Muck, Muck? Or is it going to be Picaron, in which case, Rock, Rock, Rock? <laughs> we get to go first, regardless. That's always good. We'll take it. Have a nice turn one Lily. We're already holding on to Muck and Rock. We get the benefit of a Mulligan. Hopefully this gives us an indication. Oh, his deck box is a trap. Well, we also have Judge turn one. Probably try and do it turn two, but still. So we know Acer Road is pretty bad. Pads in here, four DCs are in here. Okay. So we leave this turn and judge next turn. And hope that that wins us the game. Because that's our win condition.
Okay. Alright, step one. Have we got fairy energy? Yes, sir. Enhanced hammer as well. Gladian is their term on supporter. They have had the benefit of a deck search with their uh, energy evolution. If they wanted to, at least. We just don't want to see a basic Pokemon. Field Blow is fine. Nice. Okay. Zoroark, Zoroark, Judge. Hope to hit DC. Pray. Easy. Easy. And that pray part's really important. When you go nine tails here, I can grab a Pokecom and a Timer Ball. Because we have Stretcher, Lichen Rock. Start with this. Pog. I think we just go triple Zoro and then Ultra Ball for a basic. I mean, either way. Nine Tails, you little beauty. Oh, nice. Now we want to trade into Choice Band. Or just, well, I mean, we have Ultra Ball anyway, right? Now we don't need Ultra Ball. Go, 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 go. Don't have Max Potion Basic. Plus. That's allowed. That's also allowed, I guess. Wait, why would he not... Can we win? Why do you get rid of Ultra Ball? What a crumb. Oh, embarrassing. Go, go, go. He definitely should have brought this up there. He just goes max potion energy EV, right? Damn. 
Last chance. Damn, 20 off. Safe by resist. Now we're in trouble though. I think I should just retreat, right? I don't think he ever grabs Guzmo. He just grabs energy, EV, max pot. Pretty sure. Maybe not even the EV, just the max pot. Oh, Shuckle, sure. Time to top right. Fab Why would he fab away a choice band? He should save that for sure. Choice band doesn't change his, his day. His daily routine. If we played rainbow right now, we could probably pick this up and turn it into a garb, but... Have I already got rid of... No, I haven't got rid of the garb yet. But we don't play rainbow. And he's not going to attack us. We basically, I'm going to try and, I mean, we're 12 cards left in deck. We can find pal pads reasonably and find judge reasonably and maybe have a way to win, but it's going to take a long time. He needs to, like, seriously brick off a judge. I feel like he's already over the line. Our window is a one-turn window. And it shuts pretty hard. Hmm. Well, we've been given a chance. I mean, he's still ribbons and he's still in great shape. But I feel like we're never winning this. Ribbon. He didn't ribbon, guys. Guys, just now he didn't use ribbon. Go, go, go. Bowls. Why would he not ribbon though? His hand's that strong without ribbon. I guess it was. Jeez. Retreat ribbon? No. More poison stuff. I mean, he doesn't have to stall us out for long. <laughs> our deck is not large. Ah, at last our arc was here. We never could have got it. Genius, he knew our prizes better than us.
Pretty sure that's game. Pretty sure. I mean, he can grab counter catches and stuff now. We're almost definitely done here. It is inevitable. Well, our window was there. <clears throat> A good amount of games that window holds. <laughs> but unfortunately, not that time. Seeing Judge early is pretty poggers. Didn't quite get us there, though. Just about had enough. Let's have one more game. Going second, Vulpix is definitely a good start. Man, this hand is bust. This is a V hand right here. Pow, pow, pow. <clears throat> Beacon to end it all off as well. Insane. So they can retreat and get their Stellar Wish off. Looks like this is a matchup where we want to muck ASAP. Grabbing Ditto gives us the benefit of turning into a Lycanroc if we have to. If he is Picaron based. The fact that he's Ultra Balling a second Lightning early might tell us what he is. If he wants to grab Zapdos or just something big. Just another Jirachi. Going to switch. Stellarish again. Lily for next turn. Seems reasonable. Oh my god. Disgusting. Uh oh. We have prized Grimmy Grim Grim Grimer though. Yikes. That is a flaw with the deck, not gonna lie. I think I want to attach as a Rua, basically as a bait to make him maybe not want to knock out either of these. We can just beacon. Zoran Tails sounds good. It's a lot of value. Let's see if they can get a Guzma combination. Choice span to an Eevee. Lily is not Guzma. Happy days. Got away with an awkward prize. Feels good. They also had the unfortunate um, thing of drawing into the Jolteon that they could have got for free with an attachment. Nest Ball. Are they going to go Zap, or are they going to be a Picarom? Here's the defining turn, really, I think. 
Although at the same time, we're all non GXs on the board. Zara Aura. Hmm. Still kind of in both. I'm leaning more towards it being a Picaron. Having not seen an early zap this. See another nest ball. Maybe this is an indicator. <laughs> yeah. So it feels like the lightning toolbox over anything else. Right. It's got to be this, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's got to be this. Stadium? E switch? Stadium. Hmm. So we have all the ball search in the world here. I can already com for muck. I'll probably not want to put a Lele onto this board, but what supporter do I need? Nothing really. We don't actually need a supporter in this hand. We have so much search. I want to grab this. I think I just want to grab this. We just want more Zeruas, right? Maybe it's just both of these. Zerua, Zerua. This becomes that. This doesn't need to go on board, but could if we feel like it. I feel like trying to protect him. This becomes Muck. And just keep the ball search for more Zoroarks. I think so. Yeah, I'm going to forgo the Lele. It's such an awkward thing to have it on the board. Especially when there's a Jolty on with a choice band already. It's not asking for much, is it? I'm going to do this. I'm going to toss this. Grab this guy. I probably should have traded the Lele there. This is always happening. What's the best price to take? Both of these can get knocked out by a Lycanroc. They could quite easily have a Guzma for our Rockruff. He could Guzma Headbolt pretty easily. I think I want to evolve it just to protect it. It's a big card. Especially if he just wants to take a cheeky prize on a Zerua next turn, we can... Uh, Counter gain, possibly. The only thing it's awkward against is we want to try and have this for a for a Swift Run GX turn, right? We want to have it ready to go. So we'll keep an eye on that as it develops. They go into the free retreater. See the attachment to Zero Aura. Its base is 160, so it's not far away from knocking us out. It's a shame we weren't able to find a stadium. I mean, we only had one trade, so... I don't know what I expected. But... He could goose my muck. Not bad, not bad, I'll be honest. We're going to go into Zoro. We're going to trade. Hmm. 
Lele on this board is so scary when we don't have muck. So scary. Didn't want this to happen, but I feel like we kind of need counter game pretty badly. I feel like I'm going to commit some choice bands because they're not super relevant. Notably not on Lycan because we want this to be counter game. Also important that we did retreat the Zoroark this turn because we have to be aware of Coco GX even though he's used Coco Prism Star when there's a Thunder Mountain around it's not out of his range to just Coco GX us <sighs> well they can start digging for Electro Powers now still no Grimer by the way if you're wondering I'm not I'm not fussed about it personally but if you're wondering Grime is still prized. <laughs> I don't know. It, it might affect you. For me, I'm personally not not bothered. <laughs> oh no, he's using two electro powers. Just kidding. No, he is using two electro powers. Is he going to swift run? GX. The fact that he attached the energy tells me he probably will. Yeah. Okay. So this turn we redevelop the Rock Rough. Guzma. KO this. He comes in, doesn't win the game, which is always good. And we find a way to win the game. Good. Good talk. Just thinking, is it ever better for us just, just to attach the rock rock? No, it can't be. It can't be. Crazy talk. Don't worry. I'll still bring up a one with choice band because if it dies, we lose. So Otherwise, it would be this. Well, I hope he doesn't have his Electro Power and Guzma, basically. Any Guzma would be painful here. But Electro Power Guzma is definitely the fear because there's a Tapu Lele on our board. And that's a fragile little cookie. Taking a long time to think about Stellar Wish, which means it's not game. Right? Breathes heavily.
not game is always a good thing for us. We're going to continue to trade. That's definitely happening. This is definitely happening. We have a bait with Grimer here. Let me check. I already have Guzma, Judge, and Acerola. Those are all the supporters I want to use, so I don't need to access any other cards in our deck. I guess I can bait it, right? Doesn't hurt us. Well, round two of him not having Electro Power Guzma. This time he's gone through three Electro Powers and two Guzmas. Promoting Jolteon means nothing because he can free retreat anyway. Doing an Ultra Ball for Eevee. Looks like they're trying to thin the hand for some, some sort of draw. Lily. Shouldn't be able to get them over the line. I think we've dodged some bullets. Nice. Whew. Scary deck. But we got there. Looks like it was just a Zapdos Jolteon in the end. Not a, not a Picarom. Picaroms don't play 2-2 Jolteon, I don't think, ever. The reason why we did the Lycanroc the last turn was because Jolteon often plays Max Potion, and we don't want to get beetled by Max Potion. We wanted to put him on a two-turn clock. So we got there in the end. Um, one loss against Mill, and uh, a good game at the end there. So I think that's where we'll call it. Zoro Rock Tails. I think Tails showed its worth in terms of getting our own Pokemon out, and that's always a great thing for Zoroark. Um, but we didn't really see it as an attacking presence as much as I would have liked. In many games, it can end up coming up trumps, because when it's not a Zoroark in the, in the active, it can really help out, you know, jumping over Beast Ring, jumping over Sledgehammer Turn, or just attacking into Sledgehammer Turns with something that's not a Zoroark in your active can be beneficial as well. So all that stuff is something to bear in mind when you're looking at the Nine Tails. But overall, big thumbs up, because it helped us get more Zoroarks into play. We hit two heads on Timer Ball, which is absolute poggers. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about the deck, the build, the cards, all that decisions. Where do you think Zoroark sits in the tier list right now? I think it's tippy top. Uh, probably the best deck in format, most consistent and most powerful. And this build, although you don't want to face too many mirror matches, no Zoroark deck wants to face mirror matches because it's mostly defined by a coin flip anyway. <laughs> so good luck to you. If you're playing Zoroark, that's the biggest reason why I don't want to play Zoroark in tournaments right now. It's just Mirror is rife and it's not in your control as much as you would like. Uh, the Weavile gives you the most control possible uh, having answers for Mirror matches. But um, I think overall, a coin flip is still really going to define how that matchup goes a lot of the time. Uh, just because if you can go first, get basics down, get an attachment on board, especially on a Rockcraft, it's going to be very, very difficult for the opponent to win from then on. But yeah, that's all to discuss down below. Let me know what you guys think about it. For now, it has been Joe from Omnifolk, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.